Anatomical Terms of Microanatomy, Wikipedia Article Audio Anatomical terminology is used to describe microanatomical structures. This help describe precisely the structure, layout, and position of an object, and minimizes ambiguity. An internationally accepted lexicon is Terminologia Histologica. There are three principal shapes of epithelial cell, squamous, columnar, and cuboidal. These can be arranged in a single layer of cells as simple epithelium, either squamous, columnar, cuboidal, pseudostratified columnar or in layers of two or more cells deep as stratified, either squamous, columnar or cuboidal. All glands are made up of epithelial cells. Functions of epithelial cells include secretion, selective absorption, protection, transcellular transport, and sensing. Layout Epithelia and endothelia The three principal shapes associated with epithelial cells are squamous, cuboidal and columnar. By layer, epithelium is classed as either simple epithelium, only one cell thick or stratified epithelium as stratified squamous epithelium, stratified cuboidal epithelium, and stratified columnar epithelium that are two or more cells thick, and both types of layering can be made up of any of the cell shapes. However, when taller simple columnar epithelial cells are viewed in cross-section showing several nuclei appearing at different heights, they can be confused with stratified epithelia. This kind of epithelium is therefore described as pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Transitional epithelium has cells that can change from squamous to cuboidal, depending on the amount of tension on the epithelium. Endothelium refers to cells that line the interior surface of blood vessels and lymphatic vessels, forming an interface between circulating blood or lymph in the lumen and the rest of the vessel wall. It is a thin layer of simple, or single-layered, squamous cells called endothelial cells. Endothelial cells in direct contact with blood are called vascular endothelial cells, whereas those in direct contact with lymph are known as lymphatic endothelial cells. A mucous membrane or mucosa is a membrane that lines various cavities in the body and covers the surface of internal organs. It consists of one or more layers of epithelial cells overlying a layer of loose connective tissue. It is mostly of endodermal origin and is continuous with the skin at various body openings such as the eyes, ears, inside the nose, inside the mouth, lip the urethral opening and the anus. Some mucous membranes secrete mucus, a thick protective fluid. The function of the membrane is to stop pathogens and dirt from entering the body and to prevent bodily tissues from becoming dehydrated. Mucosa The submucosa consists of a dense and irregular layer of connective tissue with blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves branching into the mucosa and muscular layer. It contains the submucous plexus, an enteric nervous plexus, situated on the inner surface of the muscular layer, 263. The muscular layer consists of two layers of muscle, the inner and outer layer. The muscle of the inner layer is arranged in circular rings around the tract, whereas the muscle of the outer layer is arranged longitudinally. The stomach has an extra layer, an inner oblique muscular layer, 263 between the two muscle layers are the myenteric or our backs plexus. This controls peristalsis. Activity is initiated by the pacemaker cells. The gut has intrinsic peristaltic activity due to its self-contained enteric nervous system. The rate can of course be modulated by the rest of the autonomic nervous system. Submucosal and muscular layers 
The layers are not truly longitudinal or circular, rather the layers of muscle are helical with different pitches. The inner circular is helical with a steep pitch and the outer longitudinal is helical with a much shallower pitch. The coordinated contractions of these layers is called peristalsis and propels the food through the tract. Food in the GI tract is called a bolus from the mouth down to the stomach. After the stomach, the food is partially digested and semi-liquid, and is referred to as chyme. In the large intestine the remaining semi-solid substance is referred to as feces. The circular muscle layer prevents food from traveling backward and the longitudinal layer shortens the tract. The thickness of the muscular layer varies in each part of the tract. Serosa and Adventitia the apical membrane of a polarized cell is the surface of the plasma membrane that faces inward to the lumen. This is particularly evident in epithelial and endothelial cells, but also describes other polarized cells, such as neurons. The basolateral membrane of a polarized cell is the surface of the plasma membrane that forms its basal and lateral surfaces. It faces outwards towards the interstitium, and away from the lumen. Basolateral membrane is a compound phrase referring to the terms basal membrane and lateral membrane, which, especially in epithelial cells, are identical in composition and activity. Position on the cell membrane Squamous epithelium has cells that are wider than their height, Cuboidal epithelium has cells whose height and width are approximately the same, columnar epithelium has cells taller than they are wide. In the colon, for example, the muscular layer is much thicker because the feces are large and heavy, and require more force to push along. The outer longitudinal layer of the colon thins out into three discontinuous longitudinal bands, known as tenui coli. This is one of the three features helping to distinguish between the large and small intestine, occasionally in the large intestine there will be mass contraction of certain segments, moving a lot of feces along. This is generally when one gets the urge to defecate, the pylorus of the stomach has a thickened portion of the inner circular layer, the pyloric sphincter. Alone among the GI tract, the stomach has a third layer of muscular layer. This is the inner oblique layer, and helps churn the chyme in the stomach. <laughs>